All right, today we're gonna to talk about the topic of the 10 most common misconceptions about neuro-linguistic programming. Hi, my name is Michael Stevenson. I'm the founder of Transform Destiny, the world's top NLP training institute. Let's get right to it. Number 10 in descending order. The first misconception about neuro-linguistic programming is that you must be a psychologist to use NLP. And that is absolutely false. Now you would need to be a psychologist in order to use NLP to work on diagnosable disorders or uh, other diagnosable issues. Just like you would have to be a medical doctor to use NLP on any kind of physical or medical type of issues, right? The, the licensable fields have what's called a scope of practice. The scope of practice dictates what people in psychology can do and ultimately what people outside of psychology can do. Right? And so one of the things we're telling our, our students all the time who come through our trainings is, you know, going through a seven day training does not make you a psychologist. If you're trying to go out there and cure borderline personality disorder, multiple personality disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, pretty much anything that has the word disorder on it is off limits unless you're a licensed professional, meaning licensed in psychology or marriage and family therapy or licensed clinical social worker, licensed psychiatrist, one of the licensed psych fields. But in order to do anything outside of the scope of that, you don't necessarily need to have a psychology license or a psychology degree, right? If you are just holding yourself out there as a coach and you're only working on things where you're coaching people with different areas of life, you're coaching people on performance, you're coaching people on confidence, you're coaching people on better behaviors, uh, performing better, whatever it is, those things generally fall outside the, the uh, scope of psychology and you're absolutely allowed to use neurolinguistic programming for those things in most places around the world. Number nine, this is one of my favorite ones. NLP is a pseudoscience. And it's funny because, you know, on my Facebook posts and Facebook ads, I probably get at least one person every two days that comments on this. And their source for saying that NLP is a pseudoscience is Wikipedia, which is a pseudo encyclopedia. Yes, Wikipedia is not an actual real encyclopedia. Wikipedia is a website that is editable by anyone. You could literally go to any credible field whatsoever, like medicine, and you could hit the edit button and you could say medicine's a pseudoscience and hit save, right? That's the way that Wikipedia works. Wikipedia is not actually based on real research. It's not based on any real findings. It's edited by the public. And so I always find it funny that people are quoting a, a pseudo encyclopedia to say that NLP is a pseudoscience. But in fact, here's the thing. NLP can't be a pseudoscience because it's never claimed to be a science. If I walked up to you and I said, you're a fake doctor, you'd probably look at me and say, I'm not pretending to be a doctor, so I can't be a fake doctor, right? NLP doesn't pretend to be a science. It can't be a pseudoscience. What NLP is, is a model, and that's all it's ever been. NLP is the study of excellence. And the two founders of NLP, along with the other people who founded the field, they, they figured out a way to find out how people do things excellently. Now that started with therapists, in particular Virginia Satir, who's a family therapist. They wanted to find out how does Virginia Satir get such great results as a therapist when a lot of other therapists don't get such good results. And ultimately it came down to studying many things. It came down to studying her language, her beliefs, her values, and many other things about it. And ultimately they created a model of what Virginia was doing. Right? Then they ended up creating a model of what Milton H. Erickson was doing. Milton H. Erickson was a psychiatrist and a hypnotherapist. And then we've created models for many, many, many things over the years, including sales, marketing, leadership, sports. It's not a science. It looks at fields that are already established and it looks at people who are successful in getting results in those fields and then creates models from those. All of those models put together are the field of NLP. So it can't really be a pseudoscience because we've never claimed it to be a science. Number eight most common misconception is that NLP is outdated. People go, oh, that's from the 70s. Um, but it's funny because we look at fields like psychology and psychology has been around for hmm, better part of 140 years. Nobody says psychology is outdated. We look at fields like medicine. You know, modern medicine's been around for a few hundred years. Nobody says, well, medicine is outdated. Um, but for some reason, people look at the field of NLP and go, that's from 1971, it's outdated. The fact is, the field of NLP is still growing. Because it is a field of modeling, people in the field of NLP are constantly modeling new successes, new excellence. And the field is being expanded. As a matter of fact, there are some people that say that NLP is now in its third generation. Um, so uh, it's really interesting that you know, ultimately the question is not when was something created? The question was, 
The question would be, does it work? And NLP techniques work. And so um, really it doesn't matter what somebody says when they say it's outdated or it's old. I mean, it's 50, what, 53 years old at the time of this recording. I'm almost 51, I don't consider myself old. So I don't consider NLP old either. Which is funny because some of the people who say it's outdated will simultaneously call it new age. <laughs> uh, number seven misbelief or misconception about NLP is that NLP is manipulative. We get um, people all the time that go, oh, NLP is just manipulative stuff. You're just manipulating people. And, you know, there are some reasons for this. There are, unfortunately, some names, some people in the field of NLP who have used NLP in manipulative ways. I mean, some big names. There are some people who've been on TV, who've done TV infomercials, who've done big seminars, who have used NLP in manipulative ways. And those people are well known. And so a lot of times when you have somebody who's really well known in something, like consider the fact that most people think that CEOs of companies these days are evil. Why is that? Well, it's because one guy who used to run Enron went to prison back in the early 2000s. And so this kind of tainted people's ideas of kind of a whole class of people. Kind of the same thing is true with NLP. There have been some very visible people, people that have big ambitions and they put themselves out there that have used it in manipulative ways. But ultimately, the only thing that can determine whether something's manipulative or not is the person using it. You know, I always say, if you take a spoon out of the kitchen, right? A spoon can be used to either feed a baby or kill a man in prison. Is a spoon evil? Is a spoon bad? The answer is a spoon is just a tool, right? The values that dictate whether something is manipulative, whether something's bad, whether it's benevolent, ultimately come down to the person who is using the tool. And so this is one of the reasons why at our institute, Transform Destiny, we really focus on the ethical use of NLP. There are people who out there who can use it in a manipulative way, but there are people out there who use the English language in a manipulative way. You look at con artists who are out there stealing millions of dollars or tens of millions of dollars from other people, they use English. Should we say that English is manipulative? Should we ban English? Should we be afraid of English? No, what we should be afraid of is people with nasty intentions. And one of the interesting things about NLP is that you learn how to read people in NLP. You actually learn to suss out uh, pretty early on whether somebody has positive intentions or negative intentions through things like their body language and their language choice and through their behaviors, ultimately viewing their behaviors. So NLP in, in and of itself is just a powerful tool. Manipulative people can use it to manipulate powerfully. Benevolent people can use it to change lives powerfully, which is what we teach at Transform Destiny, is ultimately how do you change people's lives with this? And, and when most people are looking at the manipulative aspects, they're looking at people who are using it maybe in a manipulative way in marketing or in sales or something like that. They're not looking at what the field, the vaster part of the field is, which is helping other people, right? NLP practitioners help other people solve problems in their lives. And that is what I focus on in NLP. Number six common misconception of NLP is that NLP is a cult. And you know, this is a really interesting one. Um, and, and there are people who say, well, NLP has been used by cult leaders. Well, so has the English language, right? We don't ban the English language. We don't think the English language is bad. We look at the cult leader and we say the cult leader is bad. And while there have been some notable people who've used NLP or NLP-like techniques um, in their cult, ultimately, you know, you look at what a cult is. And in the cult, uh, and this, this is very well studied, by the way. You look at a cult, in a cult, the leader has to get people out of their environment of influence. Literally has to separate them from their family, their friends, the people who can talk reason to them. You know, people who would be suppressive to the cult. And they have to separate them from that. For that reason, generally, cults exist on communes, right? Or up in the mountains or something like that. Cults take a long time to foster influence that the cult master has. There are actually five things that happen when it comes with brainwashing. This has been studied, as a matter of fact, I think if you, if you ever look, the, the, the group that has studied this the most is the US military. And of course they use it when you look at things like boot camp. But there are five things that have to happen to brainwash a person. First thing is remove them from their envir environment of influence. Second thing is generally you have to change their biochemistry. This is one of the reasons why cults often have a very specialized diet that they use. Third thing is you have to give them pleasure if they conform. The fourth thing is you have to give them pain if they disobey or don't conform. And then the fifth thing is to uh, disrupt their sleeping habits. 
So if you've ever been through boot camp, and I've had many people when I teach my courses, they go, that's boot camp, those five things. <laughs> exactly. Um, but they are definitely trying to change you uh, in a very rapid fashion. I think it's 13 weeks in boot camp. Um, so they, they definitely employ these kinds of, of tactics. Um, but there are a lot of negative cults out there that use those kinds of things. NLP doesn't resemble any of those things whatsoever. <laughs> Um, and again, the focus of NLP is teaching people how to help other people, right? The, the main use of NLP that people come and train for is to either become a coach if they're not a licensed professional or if they're a psychologist or some other licensed professional to improve the results with their clients. It's really all about helping people. Every tool in the NLP tool belt is about helping other people get what they want out of life. So number five misconception is that NLP is all about sales or marketing. And you know, I've been in business for 28 years. I'm a marketer, I'm a business owner. I totally get this. If you've ever been around sales trainings, they're gonna teach you things like how to gain rapport. They're gonna drop in little nuggets of NLP. There are some real estate agencies, for example, that actually bring NLP trainers in to train their sales and marketing, particularly on the linguistic part of NLP. But that doesn't mean that NLP is sales or is marketing. Um, the fact is NLP is a field of modeling. We've modeled many, many people in many different fields, and some of those fields are sales and marketing. Matter of fact, uh, the co-founder of NLP, Richard Bandler, back in the early 80s, he wanted to model successful salesmen and find out what makes the greatest salesman the greatest. Head and shoulders above everyone else on the team, the one that's got all the plaques on their wall. And so he went and infiltrated uh, car dealerships, insurance sales, uh, brokerage uh, brokerage firms and, and places like that, right? And he got in there and modeled, covertly modeled what the best salespeople were doing. And so there's an element of sales in NLP. As a matter of fact, the, the product of that is something called the NLP five-step sales process. And literally in a few hours, it can take a person who's never done sales and just by them following those five steps, they can become a great salesperson. And, and that's the whole beauty of NLP is that once we have a model of excellence, you can teach it to other people and then they can get the same results that the expert does in a shorter amount of time. So while, expert, while, while NLP applies to sales and applies to marketing and even has a little bit of sales in it, it is not sales or marketing itself. Hold on tight because we're not done yet. In the next part, we'll delve into the remaining five misconceptions that might just surprise you. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. So hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications because we're about to shatter even more myths about NLP. Stay tuned.